Welcome to The Do Zone, where entrepreneurs go to get things done. I'm your host, Josh Thomas. You can find me on all social media at JT Literally. Each week, I bring on experts from a variety of backgrounds to share their secrets on how to optimize performance so you can take massive action and crush your goals. Speaking of optimizing performance, we now have trained AI sales and support agents ready to help you close more deals, reduce expenses, free up your time for higher value tasks. To learn more, go to anabots.ai. That's anabots.ai. Today's guest is Dr. Paul Rivera. Dr. Paul Rivera is a seasoned professional with a PhD in economics from the University of Southern California. He catalyzes positive change through his extensive career in academia, diplomacy, international economics, and strategic coaching. As a proud Latino, and the co-founder of Be Act Change. He is dedicated to fostering profound growth and alignment with individuals, teams, and organizations globally. Paul, welcome to the Do Zone. Tell us something you believe is the key to getting stuff done that most people wouldn't think of. Josh, thanks so much. I'm so glad to be here. I will tell you that it's something that I'm pretty new to, I'd say in the last six, eight months, but I would say it's the concept of tapping into your intuition. And it's something that I see missing in so many people that I talk to, and, and, I, and I include myself in that up until relatively recently. When I say tapping into your intuition too, I mean basically doing anything you can to access that little voice that's in your head, that, that voice that's calling you, that there's something more, that there's something else, and that you so frequently end up rationalizing over that you end up saying, no, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. Um, this isn't the right time to do that. Anything that you can do to tap into that intuition and to bring that out is what's going to push you onto that springboard that's going to move you to the next level. I've, I've seen it for myself. And for me, I can hear your question. How do you do that? <laughs> for me, everybody does it differently. You know, I've, heard, I've actually heard a few of your episodes um, and, and several of your guests, for example, talk about things like taking the five-minute meditation or sort of tapping into that. For me, what has worked better than anything has been doing breath work. Um, and I don't know how common or how popular breath work is in terms of, you know, sort of this world of, of things. And I think it can be anything, frankly, but anything that gets you to quiet all of the craziness that's going on in your mind all the time and tap into that, that part of you that's almost... It sounds crazy, but it sound that that's almost spiritual. That part of you that taps into into your core energy and helps you understand and helps you give the clarity that you know is there that you need to take to to go to that next step. It and so it's there's there's a spiritual realm, and I love that. I love that you went there. Uh, but it's actually it's not just spiritual. You said something about tapping into your intuition. Another way to say that is go with your gut. You've of heard course. that a lot, right? Yeah. And so why do we say, go with your gut? Uh, there's a physiological reason for that. And it's 100% related to that that intuition. Like your gut is telling you something. It's, it's sending a message to your brain. And you're either going to adhere to that message or you're going to ignore that message. But why your gut? And... Uh, there's a there's a book I read called 10 Second Miracles by Gay Hendricks, highly recommended. It was uh, to uh, uh, try to save an unfortunately doomed relationship I was in. Uh, but one of the things that he talked about was your body gives off these signals that represent certain feelings. So for instance, uh, if your shoulders tighten up, it means you're mad. Right. If your throat tightens up, it means that you're sad. If your chest tightens up, it means you're longing. And if your gut tightens up, it means you're afraid. Now, why? Let's focus on just the gut for now because we only have a few minutes. Yeah. But focusing on just the gut, the reason that your gut is such a reaction is when your body senses a threat, it shoots it full of cortisol. And what cortisol does is it grinds your digestive system to a halt. Whoosh. And your digestive system uses 80% of your energy is to digest food. And it's and it stops it immediately so that you've got extra energy for fight or flight. And so when you're saying tap into your intuition, it's helpful to know going with your gut, that physiological reason for it, it's saying this is the way to survival, 
make your choice, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so when you said that, I mean, like, there's so much truth to that. And it's not just spiritual. There's some science behind it, too. You know, and it was interesting. I, I come at it from a completely uh, different angle in a lot of ways. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong martial arts guy. And in martial arts, they teach you, you learn about, about your chi and your chi is your core. And that's, and that is your gut, you know? And so every time, you know, that if you hear karate guys or jujitsu guys, there's always the, the what's called the ki, the, the sort of <laughs> that, they, that they let out. And that's really, it comes from your chi, you're activating your chi. And, you know, when, for me, when I talk about, about my gut instinct or my gut intuition, I think immediately about my chi, it's my core. And that's what I'm trying to activate, you know? So, and it's, and it's, and I think it's completely aligned with, with, uh, with the way that you describe it, you know, it's just a different way of, of coming at it, but it, anything that you can do to, to sort of get in touch with that. Yeah. Strong man. And, and I appreciate you bringing that point up. And another thing that, uh, I think would be a, a good kind of transition for there going with your gut, uh, a, you like to talk a lot about uh, immigrants into the U.S., yeah. specifically Latino immigrants, and uh, I have a uh, I have a soft spot. I'm I'm like the the most Latino gringo you'll ever meet, but I'm definitely <laughs> a gringo. So uh, I spent some time in Guatemala, yeah, and that's when I realized I spent some time in Mexico and some other Latin countries. That's when I realized you look around, and you know this. You live in the Dominican Republic, right? Yep. So you know this better than than anybody. You look around, the majority of Latin America are entrepreneurs. Because going and getting a job sucks. It's like yeah. you know, they don't pay you anything. They don't treat you well. If you want to take care and provide for your family, you have to become an entrepreneur. And so could you talk a little bit about the uh, the the challenges and the opportunities specifically for immigrants and Latino immigrants and, and some of the things that you advocate for on that? You know, the, the entrepreneurial thing is, I would say is, is worldwide. You know, I see the same thing that, the, you know, any place where people have to hustle, if you, if you look in, in India and in Africa and South Asia, there's, it's full of, it's full of entrepreneurs and there's a series of things that block them. And, and it's, it's that much more complex in a lot of ways when they come to the United States. Um, so for, I mean, right off the bat, the biggest thing is basically investment capital. They, they don't come with a seed necessarily that's that's going to be what launches them, what propels them. So they're having to basically create some kind of even seed wealth from the from the beginning. Uh, typically, your standard banks are not really going to acknowledge that that group as being credit worthy. So that is a huge constraint that comes that that they come up against all the time. And then the second piece is that they don't come with sort of business sophistication in a lot of ways. And that's, you know, I, I, in a previous incarnation of my life, I worked with small business owners and by coincidence, a lot of them were, were black, brown, immigrant kind of populations. And they don't necessarily have the they don't necessarily have an MBA. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they haven't had that training in terms of things like marketing um, uh, stock and how much of their, and how much they need to purchase uh, insurance taxes. A lot of the basic things that come with, with running a business is not necessarily stuff that they're equipped with. And so what it means is that they don't necessarily have a long-term vision all the time that they're that they're really working toward it's a much more sort of day to day so the unfortunate part is that even though they are there's just this mass of entrepreneurs it's not necessarily what's generating wealth in a in a big way for a lot of them either in latin america or in the us you know it's it's just a big struggle that they have there's a it, there's a survival instinct that kicks in at some yeah. point uh, for those of you who are who are not familiar or who haven't you know if if your if your idea of understanding Latino culture is going to Cancun or Cozumel or something, it's get off of the resort and it's very very different, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and the, here's the thing: you get a college degree, and you are an attorney, and you're working twelve hours a day, and you're making about four or five hundred dollars a month, and you're better off selling tamales on the street corner because you can probably make eke out a slightly better living. And so that's where it's like, you are required to be an entrepreneur to survive and feed your family. And so it's not so much about, Hey, I want to prosper. It's 
I've got to do this. Right. And here in the right. US anyway, it's a little different. We don't necessarily got to do it to get by. But then those of us who do decide to do it, a lot of us fail. Right. Because we lack that hustle. <laughs> <laughs> it's know? it's fascinating. I, I will I will tell you that I mean me and my wife we've been on this entrepreneurial journey and it's it's a different kind of entrepreneurship but it takes no less drive and desire and 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 passion. You know if you're if you're in it just for 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 kicks and as a hobby it's it's never going to become something viable. You know it has to be something that that really you you pour your soul into it. And so what are some of the things that you would recommend to anybody that is, you know, they're trying to get ahead. Uh, what are some of the tools that you found that uh, that you would like to share with with those who are really just kind of working hard, trying to make their way and trying to get past that just uh, hand to mouth situation that they find themselves? Yeah, in? yeah. I would. I, I have a couple of things. One is, and it, and this is really hard. One is that it's worth every minute that you spend taking a step back and thinking about sort of that visioning, where it is that you want to go. Why are you doing this? What's the purpose beyond the money, beyond the, you know, the, the day-to-day -day hustle? Why are you doing this? Like, why is this business what's driving your soul? What's the purpose that you have behind it? What's the legacy that you want it to leave? Think it's worth it to think big because it, it takes you to a different place. It gives you a different vision of what could be. The second thing is aligning your actions. As soon as you have that vision, you have to start creating an action plan. You have to start building out the steps, the milestones, the small celebrations along the way that keep you moving in that direction. And, and, I, and I say these because I've, I've worked with a lot of smaller organizations, NGOs, small businesses and that sort of thing. And they just, it, you're, they're so caught up in the hustle. They just want to deliver their product. They just want to do what they're doing, you know, and, and, they, and they resist doing this. And not until we get to that point where we've talked about why are you doing this? What are the steps that you're, that you're taking? What are the steps that you haven't been taking? What are the things that you've been wasting your time on, you know, that, that really move them forward? So that's the second one. Third one is plan for life to happen. And the truth is that stuff happens as much as you want to, to plan you know, the, I'm, I'm not a religious guy, but then you know, there, there's the people who say that uh, you have a plan and then there's God's plan. You know what I mean? And, and everybody's no, got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the truth is that you have to plan for that from the, from the beginning. So you have to really think about what's your resilience tools. What, what are your resilience tools? What's your resilience strategy? What's going to keep you on track once things, once things get tough? Because they inevitably will. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, those those are those are my big three: purpose, alignment, and resilience. Yeah, and and resilience specifically, I think stands out. Uh, I had a I had a gentleman on here the other day, who said something so profound yet so simple, uh, and I just can't believe I'd never heard it before. Uh, he said this was Neil Twa, by the way, uh, and he probably will show up in a couple of episodes right before you. Perfection is derived from scarcity. Uh, action creates abundance. Perfection is derived from scarcity. Action creates abundance. And I had never thought about it that way before. I've met a lot of people that say, oh, I'm a perfectionist. And every time I meet somebody that says they're a perfectionist, they're like, their growth had been like seriously, they're, they're nowhere near their potential because yeah. they're busy trying to get everything right. Right. And I started thinking about it and it was, here's what it, here's what it comes down to. And I think I want to hear your thoughts on it, but based on your interpretation here of resilience, we want to get it right the first time because we're afraid we're not going to have another chance. Right. Action creates abundance because once we take the action and fail, we realize I can just try it again until I make it. But perfectionism is like, man, what if I don't get it right? I may not get another chance. Could you just talk about that a little bit? Oh, man. I think it, it plays right into resilience. The the perfectionism is for one is a killer. Perfectionism is a killer. That's what's going perfectionism is what's going to breed the anxiety. It's what's going to breed the imposter syndrome. It's what's going to it, it's just going to snowball. So I can I can completely understand that that linkage as he said it between between perfectionism and scarcity because perfectionism brings out to, in you everything that you feel that you are not. So that is tremendous, you know? And then the action piece, I work, I'm an economist, I think in graphs all the time, right? And so I think about this um, continuum where of growth, right? Where at first 
you are you are struggling. You're hustling and you're just trying to keep it going, right? And then you kind of hit a flow and you hit this growth path. And then you kind of hit this plateau. You get to this plateau. And this is where people get stuck. They have the choice of staying where they are. And this is a lot of guys. You can think about it. You're the, you're the guy who's got a decent job, making a decent income. They've, you've been at your, you've been at this job for a while. You've, even if it's an entrepreneurial kind of a thing, you've been at this for a while, you're doing okay. There's something inside of you. And this is where the intuition comes in. There's something inside of you that tells you there's more. You can do more. You can do better. You can level up to that next level. And what it takes is an action that's going to move you there. And that action is what's really scary. Right. That action is people talk about it as I'm taking, I'm taking the leap, right? As though there's a cliff that you're going to fall onto. Right. And I I anything that you can do to change that mentality from it's not that I'm jumping off a cliff, it's that I'm hitting a springboard that's going to take me up. Right. At this point, and especially for these sort of mid-career, pretty seasoned people, you know, you've been at this for a while. You're good at this. You know this. You know your business. You know what's the value that you bring. So you're that the only risk is sitting there for all eternity and doing nothing, you know? So the, the action piece is absolutely crucial. I, I, I love what this guy said. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. So Paul, where can we go to learn more about what you do and connect with you directly? Yes, sir. So we have a website, beactchange.com. It's under, it's not that it's under, it's undergoing a revamp, but it's live. Um, we have a book, called Creating Your Limitless Life. Uh, my wife is the primary author on that, but we do this business together. It is available on all the platforms. There's a great workbook that goes along with it. Both of those, if you're into the Kindle version, are available for 99 cents, and that's not a promotional price. That's our permanent price on those because we want all this information never to be a, a barrier to anyone. Uh, we're on the socials. We're on Instagram at b.act.change, and you can always find me at uh, LinkedIn, Dr. Paul Rivera. So. Excellent. Uh, and so just one one last question here. I I know that you mentioned you have visited 112 countries. 115, actually. Yeah. 115 countries. He's been to three since he filled out the form. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I, I, I hate it when somebody says, hey, what's your favorite? You know, what's your number one? I'm like, dude, it's so hard to choose. But if you had to boil down to like, real quick, Top three experiences from all of your travels. Okay. What are some things that immediately come to mind? Uh, three, three is easy. Thank you for saying three. Number one is Fiji. Um, I think I'm, my my spiritual soul is in is in Polynesia somewhere, uh, and Fiji is amazing. The people are are wonderful. The weather is gorgeous. The place is spectacular. The best uh, snorkeling I've ever done in my life. Number two is Portugal. Um, Portugal is it's. It's becoming more and more discovered, but it's the place in Europe that still feels like an older Europe. It's still pretty affordable, actually. It's gorgeous. Uh, the seafood, the wine, the music, it's amazing. Number three for me is Peru, and specifically Machu Picchu, but all of Peru is gorgeous. For me, the best food in the world is Peruvian food, and that, that comes from a Mexican, and that's tough to say, but <laughs> that's the best food I've ever had, and Machu Picchu is an experience that I think everyone should, should have at some point in their lives. Excellent. I can I can attest to uh, the Portugal. I was in Lisboa, yeah, and uh, I I went there specifically for a pastry called pastel de nata. Pastel de nata, yeah, yeah. And uh, I stood in line at the the number one manganinia, something like that, and I got the fresh off the crate, and it was it was an experience for sure. But yeah, it it felt like. When you get to Lisbon, it is it, you're entering a city uh, uh, from like 500 years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's spectacular. I, I love it. And 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 once you get outside of Lisbon, like if you go north to Porto and that sort of thing, it has that feel and even more. Yeah, yeah, uh, awesome, man. Dr. Paul Rivera, thanks for coming on and sharing a little bit of wisdom about how you get things done. For those of you who want to reach out and connect and learn a little bit more about what he's doing, you can go to be at change. Dot com And for those of you who are uh, on your morning commute in the gym, somewhere out in the field, snap a selfie, tag me at JT Literally. Show me what you do while you're in the do zone. And one more time, if you're looking to boost your sales, cut your costs and free up your time for higher value tasks, get yourself an Anabot. Learn more at anabots.ai. Well, that's it. Now let's get to work. Mm -hmm.